Hi, my name is Colleen Bertoni. I'm an assistant computational scientist at Argonne National Lab. I'm going to talk about some work I've done in collaboration with J. Hook Kwok and Bu Fan. The work involved porting from CPU to GPU two methods in the quantum chemistry package games and how we did it with the features available in OpenMP offloading. So first, just a couple of acknowledgements. Uh, thanks to the people on the games team who do a lot of the, the work as well as colleagues at Argonne National Lab and also acknowledgements for funding and computer time use to the Exascale Computing Project and use of the JLSE system at Argonne. So first I wanted to give a quick high level introduction to games so you can understand what type of code we're dealing with. It's a general purpose electronic structure code which has a lot of functionality. It's large, about a million lines of Fortran. It's been basically around since the 1980s as well. It has um, some optional C, C++ libraries with GPU accelerated code with CUDA. One of the Exascale computing projects main focuses is to use a method in games, FMO REMP2, to run accurate simulations of catalysis reactions inside of giant molecules like this mesoporous silicon nanoparticle shown on the right. Uh, the, this current code is parallelized with MPI plus OpenMP CPU threading. And although this can scale well on current CPU only systems, on up upcoming systems, the majority of the computing power will be on GPUs. So the node level parallel programming model for several of the methods uh, in games has been updated to use OpenMP to offload computationally expensive regions to GPUs as well. And that's our focus here. We'll focus on the GPU porting of the hartree fock method and second order molar placid perturbation theory with the RI approximation or RIMP2 method using OpenMP. So a little more detail about the methods. Uh, first, in terms of computational motifs, the hartree fock method solves a set of nonlinear eigenvalue equations iteratively for the energy of a molecular system. So there are two main bottlenecks in this method. The computation of a huge number, uh, basically n to the fourth, where n is a measure of molecular system size of four index, two electron repulsion integrals, and also um, forming the Fock matrix by contracting that n to the fourth uh, integral tensor with a density matrix. Um, the hartree fock method is a fundamental method, which is a starting point for many higher accuracy methods, such as perturbative corrections. And the next method, the RIMP2 method, is one such correction. So by using the RI approximation, the integral evaluation is simplified from four index to three index two electron repulsion integrals. And this allows the use of efficient matrix multiplication operations. Um, so these are the methods we're targeting to offload to GPUs. Uh, just quickly before going on, I wanted to talk about some GPU background to help motivate some of the porting we did. Uh, so we're going to use a specific example with E100 here. So in the hardware, GPUs are sort of organized hierarchically where you can think about different levels of the hier hierarchy as defined by the resources that are shared at that level. So in V100s, there are streaming multiprocessors, or SMs, so the boxes inside of the GPU, and CUDA cores inside each SM. Um, and this is important to note because inside each SM, there's sort of a base unit of execution called the warp, which is basically 32 threads executing in lockstep on the CUDA cores in an SM. And so if the code is written in such a way that all the threads in the warp do different things, then there's thread divergence and less efficient use of the hardware. So two examples, and we ran into these two examples, let's, uh, I'll talk about that in a bit, are load imbalance and branching. So first for load imbalance between threads, you have an instance where one thread takes longer than the others to compute something sort of shown here, and branching, which results in the warp having to execute the same code once for every branch with, with part of the warp masked out. So sort of shown here with the having to execute this twice. So that was just a tiny bit of um, background about porting to GPUs to keep in mind for what I talk about later in porting the code with games. So starting with the Hartree Fock code, uh, here we focused on the four index two electron integral evaluation since these are a main computational bottleneck. Uh, the code was parallelized previously with MPI plus OpenMP CPU threading, but it contained multiple levels of conditional statements and the work assigned to each thread was not equivalent leading to a load imbalance. So the pseudocode on the left sort of shows what the original code was like. Basically the CPU threads were parallelized over this large end of the fourth loop 
um, but each thread will call different methods, so method one or method two. And then even inside of each method, there was even more branching to different integral type. So this wasn't great for a GPU, which wants all the threads in a warp to be doing the same thing. So basically our strategy was to substantially reorganize the control flow and order in which integrals are computed by sorting the integrals ahead of time and removing separate conditionals and two separate code blocks sort of as shown on the right. So in general, again, this is strategy is a generic transformation for CPU to GPU code. And we just used OpenMP as our tool of choice to express these optimizations. Um, and just noting even the, the code to actually do the work to compute the integrals like routines in int one and int two remain the same as before, just the order and the flow in which we computed them was adjusted. Um, and then after we reorganized to sort the integrals and call methods separately, the open up few directives to offload, edit, were minimal. So as shown in the figure to the right, we only used a few pragma here with target team distribute parallel do, as well as um, adding declare target to note that we are calling routines from inside of target regions. So this code is implemented for one type of integrals in a development branch of games, and it's not yet available in the most public release of games, but it will be soon. Um, so just let's look at some results after we did all of the hard work to do that. Um, here we compare the wall clock time for running the original CPU code with 42 threads on a Power9 CPU to the modified version with 42 threads for a CPU portion and one V100 for the GPU portion. Um, we're running with a variety of input sizes where which this is what this N denotes, how many water molecules from four to 64. And basically what we ended up seeing was we can get up to about a, a 9X speed up for our largest input size, uh, speed up of the GPU time over CPU. So this is a really nice end result. Uh, but to get there, we had some challenges. Um, in particular, even though we had the needed functionality in the OpenMP specification, we ran into unexpected performance issues. For example, in our initial GPU port, we offloaded a region inside of a host function just called at each iteration of a solver. So the offloaded uh, region also uh, mapped private variables to the GPU, and it contained a function call, which was marked as declare target to allow it to be called from an offloaded region. When we tested our initial port of this using the IBM portion OpenMP compiler and Summit, we ended up seeing that the time per iteration of the solver increased, which is basically unacceptable for an iterative solver because you're doing it multiple times. And so it just took longer and longer. Uh, so to work around this, we ended up manually inlining the routines called in the offloaded region, which resulted in the time per call remaining constant, which is expected and like essential for code with an iterative sol solver. So despite the declare target, being part of the OpenMP specification, the IBM compiler's performance in our case, or specific instance, resulted in us not being able to use the functionality effectively. Um, this issue has been reported to IBM, and it actually doesn't occur with other Fortran compilers. We've tried like the Craig Fortran compiler. Uh, so moving on to the RAMP2 code. Uh, here, uh, we focus on the computation of the perturbative correction, since this is the main bottleneck of the RAMP2 method. Um, just for some reference, if you want to look at the math, the energy term and the RA approximation are shown on, on the right just for reference. Uh, so we can look at uh, the original CPU code. So the figure on the left is the original CPU algorithm. Um, basically, we call DGEM and then do some computation with the results of DGEM. And even on the CPU, the majority of the time is spent in calls to this uh, matrix multiplier routine or DGEM, which is a standard in uh, math libraries like BLOSS. So to port to GPUs, the strategy was to merge sections of arrays so that the inputs to the DGEM call are larger. This is important because it results in a higher arithmetic intensity per DGEM call and less overhead from kernel launches from the CPU to the GPU. Um, this results in the, the code shown on the right. Um, the changes to sort of note first are in red. We basically increase the dimensions of the array sent to DGEM. As you can see, there's no longer this outer loop of IACT um, over the call to RAMP2 EIJ that's sort of been partially incorporated into the call to DGEM. So as with the hard to code, this is sort of a generic CPU to GPU code optimization, trying to put 
um, have less kernel launches and more work to math library calls. Um, and we just used OpenMP to express the data transfer and the parallelism. Um, this code was implemented and evaluated in a mini app and in a development branch of games. So let's look at some of the results, um, which were evaluated in the mini app on Summit. So these are from this paper here. You can grab it and look at it later. Um, so basically for large enough inputs, the OpenMP GPU version running on a single V100 GPU was six to seven X faster than the CPU version running on two IBM Power9 CPUs. And I just picked one out that's highlighted in green. That's what um, this is trying to show. Um, the important thing is that this is near the best expected speed up for floating point dominated code since the theoretical ratio of the peak floating point performance of one V100 to two Power9 CPUs is approximately seven X. So this, the, the GPU OpenMP version shows a speed up over the CPU version, which is near the theoretical floating point performance ratio, which is really nice. Um, I mean, the one thing to note from this table that you can see is that we tried multiple different GPU math libraries, Kublas, Kublas XT, NVBOSS, which have different ways of invoking them from OpenMP. So we ended up with a bunch of if defs in our code to call different math libraries. Um, additionally, I want to note that this code can take advantage of multiple GPUs on Summit by using MPI to offload the DGEM calls to the six GPUs on the Summit node. And given a large enough input, again, the code achieved an approximately 40x speed up compared to two Power9 CPUs, which is again near the theoretical ratio of peak floating point performance of six V100s to two Power9 CPUs. Okay, so the biggest issue we faced here was the multiple different ways of calling the vendor math libraries from OpenMP. So even within the same vendor, so Kublas, Kublas XT, or NVBLOSS. Um, and also having that code, it's not necessarily portable to different vendor GPUs, since it's using an NVIDIA way of calling the standard BLOSS function. But this, is, this did work really well, and we achieved nice speed ups. So finally, I wanted to just summarize some, some takeaways. So the first thing is like, basically, even though this is a talk about how we use OpenMP, we really just started thinking about how to take our CPU code and get it to parallelize and run well on GPUs. And then we just chose OpenMP and use it as our tool of choice to do this. And after we did that, um, most of this work was done with the, OB the OpenMP offload compiler on Summit, so IBM 16.1 compiler. We did have a few issues, like the unexpected poor performance for some features and figuring out how we wanted to handle interactions with vendor math libraries. But overall, we achieved, we were able to achieve really nice speed ups running on the CPU over the GPU. And we had the needed functionality in, in the OpenMP to port our code. And the plug um, for, we're excited about in OpenMP 5.1, uh, we expect and hope that the dispatch construct in OpenMP 5.1 will help with this issue of um, vendor libraries. So we hope um, it will help make vendor library calls that interoperate with OpenMP to be more portable across vendors. And that's all I have. Thank you very much for your attention.